South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is widely believed to be one of the top contenders to be Trump's running mate. And in an effort to boost her profile, she did what all politicians with presidential ambitions do. She released a book. A memoir about herself. Now, usually these books are meant to humanize these politicians and make them seem more personable and relatable, but Christy Noem, she chose to take a different approach. She decided to show us all how demented she is, which caused a lot of people to speculate, specifically about one particular passage, whether or not she's a psychopath. Now, I am no psychologist, I'll admit that, I'm not an expert, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that she is a psychopath. And to be clear, I'm not using the word psychopath as a pejorative. I mean, she might literally be an actual psychopath, as evidenced by a passage in her book where she describes herself murdering animals, including her puppy. And she responded to the backlash by saying, no, it's totally cool, guys. I just killed three more animals last week. This is a wild story, but nonetheless, let's take it from the top. So Rolling Stone reports, in no going back, the truth on what's wrong with politics and how we move America forward, Noam's forthcoming book, which was reviewed by The Guardian, Noam describes in excruciating detail the brief life of Cricket, a 14-month-old wire-haired pointer puppy she intended to use as a pheasant hunting dog. Noam describes Cricket as having an aggressive personality she hoped to calm by taking the dog on a hunt. According to the governor, Cricket didn't so much hunt as have the time of her life chasing birds and going out of her mind with excitement. Now, keep in mind, a 14-month-old dog is basically a puppy. Now, you can train a puppy, but your mileage may vary depending on the dog itself and their personality and whether or not you're a good trainer. It can happen. So she took the dog on a hunt in an effort to train the puppy, but predictably the dog just wanted to run around and play because it's a puppy, right? But she thought that taking it on a hunt where there's endless stimuli would be a good environment to train a dog. It's so bizarre to me. Like, it kind of shows you how stupid she is that she thought that would work. Like, you need to put your dog in a predicament where they're not going to be overstimulated and want to run around and play. But she's like, hey, I'm going to take it hunting. All right, there's going to be a lot of shit happening, but that's when the dog's really going to listen to me anyways. So as she's driving back from this failed hunt with the puppy, the puppy jumps out of her truck and the puppy then proceeds to attack chickens. Quote, like a trained assassin, Gnome writes, Cricket began grabbing one chicken at a time, crunching it to death with one bite, then dropping it to attack another. While it is legal in South Dakota to kill a dog found chasing, worrying, injuring, or killing poultry or domestic animals, it's by no means required, and there's no indication the owners of the chicken made any such demand. According to the Guardian's review, multiple chickens lost their lives before Gnome finally intervened to restrain Cricket, who she described as the picture of joy throughout the ordeal. When the governor attempted to grab her dog, Cricket allegedly made to bite her. They say dogs are like their owners, and after paying the distraught family for the value of their chickens, Gnome was apparently seized by a similar deadly urge. Okay, let's pause right there because there's a couple of things that I want to say. First of all, the puppy wouldn't have been able to jump out of the truck and attack the chickens in the first place if you didn't have the puppy riding in the back of the truck. Why would you do that? That's your fault. You did this. You're responsible. Second of all, it seems like the training was working because this happened after you took the dog hunting, specifically of pheasants, right? So you were trying to teach the dog to kill birds. The dog kills birds, and then you get mad at the dog. Imagine how confused the dog must be where it's doing what you want, and you're mad. I mean, it just... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Now, this dog, as it's killing chickens... She says that she tries to get him to stop by first issuing verbal commands and then using a shot collar. So, okay, as a dog owner, your dog's not going to listen to you. You have to grab the dog and stop him from killing chickens. You have to physically restrain your dog because it's not, she's not going to listen, right? And then she uses the shot collar. That doesn't work either. Now, first of all, I think that shot collars are animal abuse. So it's not necessarily surprising that a puppy murderer would use a shot collar, but she already had it on. She tried to use that. That didn't work. And then the dog tried to bite her when she tried to restrain it. Okay. So this is something that happens if you're not training your dog properly, 
right? But you can train the dog and get it to be less aggressive. That doesn't mean that you have to fucking kill your dog if it tries to bite you, right? If you're feeding your dog and you try to take away food or, or take a bone away from it and it tries to snap at you, that doesn't mean you have to kill the dog. She wanted to kill the dog and she did. Now, as the article implies, like her dog, she too went on a deadly rampage herself that same day. And this next part is wild because they provide you with quotes that kind of detail her frame of thought. Quote, I hated that dog, Gnome recalls, calling Cricket less than worthless as a hunting dog, untrainable and dangerous to anyone she came in contact with. Quote, at that moment, I realized I had to put her down, the governor recalls. Gnome dragged Cricket to a gravel pit and shot her dead in front of a startled construction crew. Quote, it was not a pleasant job, but it had to be done, she recounts. And after it was over, I realized another unpleasant job needed to be done. Oh, my God. The governor then decided that another one of her animals was deserving of a summary execution, a mean old disgusting musky rancid goat who sometimes chased her children and messed up their clothes. Pretty normal behavior if you've ever been around a goat, but in Gnome's eyes, a capital offense. But unlike Cricket's mercifully quick death, Gnome botched her first shot at the goat and was forced to run back to her truck for more ammo to finish off the wounded animal. And I just want to reiterate here, she chose to share this information with us because she probably thought that it would make her look more endearing. And her thinking in this book, as she explains it, and I'm paraphrasing, is that like this kind of demonstrates that she can make tough decisions, right? She's a real leader. She does things that she doesn't want to do for the greater good. Lady, you are off your motherfucking rocker and you should not be out in the public. Like you need to be in a room with padded walls, literally. This is not normal behavior. This is serial killer shit. Like, I don't want you anywhere near power if this is your thinking, because if you could do that to your own pets, I don't want to imagine what you'd be willing to do to actual people. But thankfully, we don't have to imagine what she would do if she had power, because we already got a taste of it. Her state had one of the highest death rates in the country when it comes to COVID-19, especially during the heart of the pandemic. And as the New York Times reports, she tried to rebrand her policy failures as quote unquote freedom. Yeah. So she might be a literal psychopath and she didn't even think twice about including this in her book because to her it's perfectly normal there's nothing wrong with killing animals in her eyes but to her surprise people aren't okay with this and this didn't go over too well because obviously and she was forced to come out and respond to the criticism that she's received and her response was even more insane because she is basically like look it's totally cool everyone uh, murdering animals is a responsible thing to do. I just did it again not that long ago. So this is what she tweeted. I'm not joking. Quote, we love animals, but tough decisions like this happen all the time on a farm. Sadly, we just had to put down three horses a few weeks ago that had been in our family for 25 years. Then she says, if you want more real, honest, and politically incorrect stories that'll have the media gasping, you can buy my book. Okay. First of all, after hearing about how you murdered your puppy and goat, you'll have to forgive me for questioning why you had to put down three horses a couple of weeks ago. I mean, were they neighing too loudly? Did you do a mass execution? I'm sorry, I don't trust you because you seem like a psychopath. Your behavior indicates that you are a psychopath. And if this is what you're willing to admit to all of us, I don't want to know what you're doing behind closed doors because it's probably really, really demented and twisted. And I'm sorry, but are you actually promoting your fucking book right now? And that's how you're going to promote it? Well, if you hate this story about me murdering my puppy, you'll be gasping at these other stories that I have to share. Lady, what is wrong with you? Oh, my God. I like I I often say that Republicans are psychopathic. This is like next level. This is insane. And of course, she was ratioed into oblivion with that uh, with that post, which kind of forced her to put out a more thoughtful reply in response to the outrage that she sparked. And her response here, it doesn't really help the situation. It just kind of solidifies the fact that she is deeply mentally unwell. She writes, quote, I can understand why some people are upset about a 20-year-old story of Cricket, one of the working dogs at our ranch in my upcoming book, No Going Back. Oh, she's plugging it again. Can't not plug it. Uh, the book is filled with many honest stories of my life, good and bad days, challenges, painful decisions, and lessons learned. Seems like you didn't learn from this. What I learned from my years of public service, especially leading South Dakota through COVID, you didn't though, you let them die. 
why you enacted no precautions and let thousands of people die, you fucking psychopath, is people are looking for leaders who are authentic, willing to learn from the past, and don't shy away from tough challenges. Oh my god, she's actually saying that this this proves that she's like a real leader. Holy shit. My hope is anyone reading this book will have an understanding that I always work to make the best decisions I can for the people in my life. The fact is, South Dakota law states that dogs who attack and kill livestock can be put down. Given that Cricket had shown aggressive behavior toward people by biting them, I decided what I did. Yeah, you did. Whether running the ranch or in politics. Oh, no, she's she's doing it. I have never passed on my responsibilities to anyone else to handle, even if it's hard and painful. I followed the law and was being a responsible parent, dog owner, and neighbor. As I explained in the book, it wasn't easy, but often the easy way isn't the right way. Except as you described it, you made it seem like it was pretty easy for you because you're like, I just murdered my puppy. Now I'm going to go get the goat. Bruh! I mean, like, am I going crazy here? Lady, you're killing animals and you're making it seem like that's perfectly normal. That's not normal. Okay, that is not normal. It's not normal to kill your puppy and then be like, now nah, I'm going to kill the goat next. Like, I could understand if you had an old dog and you had to take it to the vet to get euthanized because it was dying and in pain. That is understandable. This is not understandable. You did not have to kill your puppy. You chose to kill your puppy because you hated that dog. And what makes it worse is that she paints this picture of this dog being full of joy and just like so inquisitive. And she's like, but I'm going to kill it. Psycho shit. Absolute psycho shit. Now, of course, that post got ratioed badly as well. And I get the sense that she's not really able to grasp why people are so shocked by her story, including Republicans. And I think that the only reason why she's not going with the whole the woke mob trying to cancel me for killing my puppy now is because Republicans actually responded to this. For example, Republicans like Carrie Lake and Ron DeSantis subtweeted her with pictures of themselves and dogs, I guess, to presumably communicate to everyone that Republicans don't actually think that dog killing is normal and they actually think it's not okay and leave it to christy gnome to make carrie lake look like a normal person right so i mean you know that you fucked up when republicans aren't even willing to defend you here although there was of course one exception take a guess of course it's michael knowles yes it was politically dumb for gnome to admit this yes her political calculation misfired i'm mixing metaphors you get the point but the third point is Gnome didn't do anything wrong. You might say it wasn't advisable. You might say there were better things she could have done. She could have given the dog up for adoption. She could have tried to train the dog. She could. There is nothing wrong with a human being humanely killing an animal. There's nothing wrong. You're all, not all of you, but many of you are eating meat right now. Very few people live on farms anymore, I guess. It's a little bit different. You know, maybe if you live in the city, you take your puppy uh, you know, you take your little cat in a stroller down the sidewalk. I'm not joking. I have friends who've done this in the city. They, they'll, they'll put their, their animal in a stroller so that the, the poor little paws of the animal don't touch the dirty sidewalk. And then you'll go and you'll take them to a doctor and you'll pay thousands of dollars to treat the animal for whatever ailment or to, to try to train the, the animal psychologically. And sometimes that doesn't work. And then you'll pay even more money to euthanize it. That doesn't happen in the country. Okay. That doesn't happen on farms. And sometimes, if, if a dog is threatening people and if a dog is destroying other people's property, sometimes you got to put the dog down like old yeller. It would be one thing if Christine and were torturing this dog like a serial killer or something. That would be wrong. And it would be wrong. It's wrong to mistreat animals, not because the animals have any rights. Animals don't have a rational soul. The reason it's wrong, nevertheless, to mistreat animals is because it deadens our own humanity. C.S. Lewis writes about this extensively. If you are needlessly inflicting pain and suffering on some suffering to the degree that an animal can suffer on some poor creature, that's deadening your humanity. That's bad for that's what makes it wrong because because you are a rational creature and that's that's harmful to your soul and it's harmful to society. But there's nothing wrong intrinsically with with humanely putting down a farm dog. A bullet to the head is is about as humane a way as you can put down any animal. She did nothing wrong. She just killed her puppy and a goat. Nothing wrong. Okay. I think he's like the one Republican who's like, you know what? I'm going to stick my neck out and defend her. And he's kind of like talking past everyone who's vocalizing outrage with her, rightfully so, by the way. So first of all, sure, I guess that you can get me to concede that 
if an animal is going to be executed, I guess that putting it down in the most humane way matters. Sure, shooting it might be the most humane way, assuming one, you actually need to put it down, which she did not, and two, you do it on your first try, which was not the case with her goat, which suffered because she fucked up and missed. So there's that. But people aren't even debating the most humane way to kill an animal. You're having that conversation with yourself. You're shadow boxing. People are mad that she killed the animals in the first place that did not need to be killed. Again, these were not elderly animals that were sick and needed to be put down because they were suffering. This was a puppy and a goat that didn't need to die, but she chose to kill them anyway. The puppy wasn't sick or irredeemable. She chose to kill it because she's sick in the head. And now you're defending that, Michael Knowles. So congratulations. Now, he also weirdly adds that animals don't have souls. But I find that such a weird thing to say because there's no evidence that humans have souls. That's a concept that we made up. But I mean, if you're going to believe that humans have souls, which is fine, I don't agree with that. But if you think that humans have souls, why would you think that animals don't have souls? Doesn't that seem inconsistent? God, just like, look, I'm going to give human souls and let them have an afterlife, but animals, it's nothingness for eternity after they die. That just seems kind of weird and even cruel of God, right? And he adds that, you know, it's bad to mistreat animals because it deadens your humanity. But if that's true, and I agree with that point in a vacuum, but if that's true, wouldn't it also deaden your humanity to mistreat humans, which Michael Knowles is in favor of, as is the case with Christy Nome. I ask this because this is the same fucking guy who said that we should eradicate transgenderism, but didn't mean genocide, just transgenderism itself. I don't know how you do that without eradicating trans people, but he said that. But apparently, uh, you know, he he's worried about humanity. Shut the fuck up. Honestly, I'm not shocked at all that of all the Republicans, Michael Knowles is the one that chose to defend Christy Nome in this instance. You know, sometimes you could just shut the fuck up and say nothing, but Michael Knowles, uh, he couldn't help himself. He's like, I see a sick and de demented person. I defend them. I'm a simple man. All right. Say something fucked up. I'm going to come and defend that. That's, that's who he is. But I mean, he can't even deny how politically idiotic this was for her to share this. And the reason why she shared this is because she can't fathom why people would be angry at this. But I mean, I don't disagree there. It was politically stupid. In fact, I actually think this might have harmed her chances of becoming Trump's running mate because even Republicans aren't cool with this as evidenced by the fact that they're all like, hey, we love dogs. We're not like Christy Nome. But let this be a lesson to Republicans. When someone in power is perfectly fine with tens of thousands of people dying, especially their own constituents, when that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, you can implement mask mandates and lockdown precautions. When somebody's okay with that and calls that freedom, maybe take that as a sign that that person has a few screws loose, as evidenced by Christy Nome coming out as a defender of puppy murder. And in fact, not a defender, of a murderer of puppies and goats and a defender of such actions. Like that, when people tell you who they are, you should believe them. And uh, Christy Nome is letting us all know that she is uh, a psychopath. So, yeah. Excuse me. Vagina. <laughs>